Welcome to the Kingspiration Podcast. This is the place where you'll learn how to get unstuck and gain momentum in your life and business. Each week, we tackle the real aspects of entrepreneurship, personal development, relationships, and fitness. I'm your co-host, Ethan King, from Atlanta, Georgia, USA, entrepreneur, TEDx speaker, and best-selling author of Wealth Beyond Money. And I'm your co-host, Justin King, no relation to Ethan, from Cape Town, South Africa, entrepreneur, speaker, and business growth strategist. Our journey crosses continents and cultures, sharing wisdom and experiences to propel you forward. Welcome to Kingspiration. Let's start the conversation. So on the physical side, something interesting I've learned about myself over the years is that if I work myself out too hard, like, like if I have a heavy leg day or anything or sprints or something, I'll get physically sick. Like I'll, I'll have a cold for about two days. It, it feels like I have a cold. And I started to notice, notice this pattern and I thought it was just coincidence, but then I did some research on it and that, you know, if you it is a body's response. You can get an inflammatory response from working out too hard and you can get these flu-like symptoms. So I hate it. So I was out there sprinting with my daughter. She's, she's taking soccer, or I guess football, as you guys call it. Um, no, we also call it soccer. Also soccer. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And so I said, well, we, we got to work on sprints. So I decided I was going to help train her on sprints. I don't know why I thought I would do that because she's really fast. So I was out there trying to keep up with her. And the next day, my legs were just so sore. Like I haven't truly sprinted in a long time. I'll do interval training, but actually pushing myself to sprint. So I got, I got that sickness, that cold for like two days. And coming home one day, I, I had a conversation with ChatGPT on audio while I was driving in the car. I just, thought, I just asked the app, I said, because I was feeling horrible, like, blowing my, my nose was running and almost felt like I had feverish. And I said, Hey, when I work out too hard, I, I get sick. And why does this happen? And then chat GBT gave me all these re responses. And we had a conversation the whole way home. I was in the car by myself, but it felt like I was talking to another human because it was so fluid, just talking on talking to chat GBT on the iPhone app. So I thought that was a it was it was a bit eerie, but it's kind of where we are today. You know, the, the future is is now. It, it, it's a really interesting story because, as you say, the future is now, and I don't think we've all had that opportunity yet to experience it to experience it to that degree. The power of it, I suppose. the The scary thing, and one thing that jumps out to me is, do you fully trust everything it's telling you, uh, or, yeah. or is there is there a part of you that's going? I'm taking this with a pinch of salt. I need to go and do my own research to to confirm what is being fed to me. I suppose that's the question. Yeah, that's always the question because Chat GPT is known to hallucinate, make up things. You know, with something like this, I've I've researched it a little bit before, so it lines up with, you know, it's getting this data from the internet. So it does make sense. And if I weren't in the car, I started asking ChatGPT whenever I'm doing research to I actually cite its sources so then I can click on the links and, and kind of verify some of it. But I mean, to the extent of can you trust anything on the internet? I mean, how, how long have we been trusting Wikipedia? It's all written by other people. But you, we, I guess we put trust in that, trust in a, a some type of vetting process, even if it's, whether it's through a system like Wikipedia where other users vet it. Or, you know, if it's something, if it's just BS out there on the internet, I guess you could look in the comments and kind of see the kind of gauge, but it's, it's always hard to tell, right? It is hard to tell. And I think we live in an age where the amounts of information that we have access to makes it more difficult to tell that which is the truth from that which is not. And yeah. it, I, yeah, I, I don't even know where I'm going with this conversation because <laughs> it's, I don't know where it ends up and with AI being where it is and where it is going to, it's just going to be kind of, I'm going to say even worse, better, worse than it is <laughs> now. There's, there's going to be even more, there's going to be even more well written or well articulated, well argued, well researched. Yeah. 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 The, the problem Have is you... that, 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 that fictitious white papers are just going to be generated. So what's mm -hmm. to stop, what's to stop somebody from literally or AI getting to a point and somebody saying, Hey, chat GPT or any 
any AI platform, create 10,000 white papers on X, Y, and Z detailing why this is the right way to approach this particular whatever it is. And somebody else will be on the other side and asking the exact same thing. And you've got these two incredibly strong arguments for whatever this particular topic is. Hmm. And which do you trust? And they can all fictitiously cite certain research papers. That's where I, I don't know where you, where you draw the line. Hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. But I mean, humans could do that now. I mean, it, AI will help you do it faster. But, you know, I could sit down and generate 10 fake white papers right now if I really wanted yeah. to. I, I, yeah. I heard a, a wonderful example of this the other day. I can't remember what I was, was reading or listening to, but there was a researcher who was doing a research paper on, they were doing a research paper on fictitious research papers, essentially. So people that are creating fictitious studies, fictitious results, and really putting out a lie in any white paper or research paper that they have written. Turns out that they created fictitious stats for this for this particular <laughs> research paper that they were creating themselves. So I mean, it's just where does where mm. it end? Right? It's, yeah. it's crazy. You can't trust. Really it's crazy. No, you can't trust any statistics these days, right? I mean, it just no. I guess you got to take it all with a grain of salt. But I do have some future predictions for AI, and I I did an AI workshop in Virginia last week, like a four hour intensive workshop for for, for uh, businesses. It was for an EO chapter where people left with actual like tangible things for their business. It's kind of a, the evolution of the, of the talk that I've been doing. But at the end of it, I give these future predictions, which I think is in line with what we're talking about today. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this, Justin, because these are just my predictions based on what I see happening already. So, you know, we already know AI is going to be woven into the fabric of our everyday lives more and more. It's like we have Alexa, Siri, Google, which are kind of dumb compared to, oops, Siri heard me say that, <laughs> but they're kind of dumb compared to chat GPT. So those are going to evolve into being fully, you know, like learning language models that I see that coming within the next year because Google and Apple need to keep up with the AI trend. But as that continues to happen and the more data it has on you, the more the more tailored AI can be to benefit you because it understands your preferences. I mean, my car knows where I go. So if my car were more AI powered, I can really have a conversation with it about certain things. It knows my preferences. It can automatically adjust the climate, all of that kind of stuff. And then combine that with, so now have you played around with Suno? There's a there's an app called Suno, S-U-N-O dot AI, where oh. you can just, Okay, so you can type in, check it out, it's it's free. You can literally type in a description of a song. So it's prompt-based song generation. And within like 30 seconds, it will create whatever you described. Like I could say, write me a song about entrepreneur Justin King in South Africa and make it the rhythm be hip hop with a guitar riff. It will write out the entire song and like, have studio quality music almost with lyrics and it makes sense it'll do it in like 30 seconds it's mind-boggling so and then combine that so that's music and then we have sora coming out which is by open ai which is prompt based video creation yeah. so if yeah so have you seen the the demos of that like with the girl walking through tokyo man it's so this is like hd quality stuff there's a there's one video of of a snake or a, a lizard or something, and you can see it scales up close in HD, and none of it's real. It's all created through a text prompt. So you'll be able to create music, create movies, and the thing about it is it gonna, it's going to be democratized and everybody will, will have this power in their pocket. So, so what, what does it mean in the future? What does it mean to be creative? Right. I, I'm, yeah, I, so I have a thought on that. I'm actually going to get to that in just a second, but let's, let me paint the, paint the picture a little bit more of where we're headed with the dem democratization, the democratization, is that right, of this? Yeah. So now we have Neuralink that's, that's coming into development with the Elon Musk company where, you know, he's putting the brain chip in and 
the paraplegics can control, they can control a device and whatnot. You know, I know a lot of people are like, well, I'm not going to get anything implanted in my brain, but I, I think people will want that one day. But even without Neuralink, have you ever tried the Muse headbands for meditation? It's called no. Muse. So M-U-S-E. You can, it's, I think it's about $200. It's this headband you wear and it connects to your phone via Bluetooth. And I can literally, it'll tell you to calm your mind and focus on your breathing. And I can, it shows you this readout on your phone screen. And I can literally, with my thoughts, see it change on the phone. It is really mind boggling because I'm like, okay, wait, I, if I can influence my phone just through my brain waves, that means I could probably one day soon, I'll be able to type into my phone just by thinking about it. Yeah. Because that's what they're doing. They could do that with Neuralink if they could control an interface with their minds. That's what Stephen Hawking's he used to type, remember using the he could put each yeah. letter in using his mind. So if we can type using our minds in the very near future and we can generate videos, songs, images with type, then we'll be able to just think about it and create movies. Everybody will have this power. How crazy is that? You could create, and now it'll start with short movies, like maybe one minute commercials. And by the way, people in the commercial industry are panicking about this. But when everyone will have the power to just think and create songs and movies, yeah, what's that going to do to the entertainment industry? And to answer your question, I predict that live human interaction, live performances, Broadway shows, concerts, I think we're going to have a resurgence in that because people will crave to know that it's real and not AI generated. Yeah. So because my next question, and I think you've answered it with what you just said now around people craving what is real, is what came to mind is the idea of scarcity. That which is scarce is often the most valuable. And currently, I think scarcity is very closely linked to creativity. Not everybody is massively creative. Not everyone can write a song, sing well, play the guitar, play the drums, whatever it is, put it all together, package it. Not everyone can create a movie. Not, a, not everyone's an amazing artist. So right. there's an element of scarcity involved with those products that get put out at the end of the day. And with the democratization of creativity, because it's not, yeah. it's, it's literally the democratization of creativity that means that there's just zero scarcity across any of that. Right. So exactly. So the only so, scarce thing would be seeing you performing live in person. But how do we right. even know we get, we'll get to a stage where how do you know that's not a, a 3D hologram? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it'll have to be verified. It, it's almost like the opposite of a magic trick. Like, no, I have to prove like, hey, I'm really standing here. Like maybe somebody, you know, let, gotta let some people touch you and throw some things at the hologram <laughs> to make sure it doesn't go through it. But but yeah, there are, people are gonna crave that, even when it comes to art and like like visual art, painting. I think that we're like people will appreciate because you could I can generate any painting I want to using Mid Journey right now, and it'll be awesome. But people will want to see a live performance of someone painting. People want to see yeah. a live performance of, of music, movies, and even maybe, to, to your point, maybe it'll be like smaller, intimate ga gatherings because then they, you know I'm actually really standing there. But I think that people, yeah, if it's not scarce, people don't appreciate it. And if it's on a screen, and 10 years from now, we won't trust anything that's on a screen. You can't because it could be, I could be talking to AI, Justin, right now. I don't even know. Like, yeah. I mean, it, It'll be so tuned to your mannerisms and your thoughts that I could be like, I could be talking to an AI version of you and, and I wouldn't know. So I, I will value our human face-to-face -face meetings. I, I just predict a huge resurgence in that in the next decade or so. What does it mean for data? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So, well, I'm not, I'm not into dating scene. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I, mean, I, I would, I prefer real girls over AI girls anyway, though. No. I, I agree with you on that, but I, I think <laughs> there, there's so many people that are happy to, to live their lives and let, let's kind of look at how this has progressed over time, how people have lived their lives through, what did it start with? MySpace, Facebook, yeah. Instagram, TikTok, and you, you, you're kind of living in this, this digital world, <laughs> which is fantasy. 
And I think okay. maybe let, let's use Facebook as the, the probably biggest example of where I've seen a lot of it. But just, just painting a picture of what your life ne- isn't necessarily. And I think you hide in that. And that's probably going to translate then to living in a world which is not reality, but it's kind of your reality of being very comfortable to only have a relationship with somebody that's on a screen. And maybe, maybe, who knows, maybe there's a doll involved. We won't go there. I know they're pumping out all sorts of AI integrated sex dolls yeah. and whatever. Yeah. But I think if you can get, if you can get everything you need as far as emotional connection, empathy, whatever it is from something or somebody, no, no, something programmed to be perfect for what your needs are, where does that leave you then? wanting to go into the outside world and try find that yourself and get hurt and mm. stumble and be rejected you're never going to be rejected online if mm. there's a if 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 all the dating platforms choose to have match with with ai you can just anything any any match that you score any any man woman whoever you swiping on is going to match with you because it's just pre programmed you could be a traditional People are going to call me out. You could be a traditional five and you could be swiping on 12s and you get to be matching. It's, yeah. it's you living in your, in your, in your perfect, your perfect non-real world. Yeah. I did hear somewhere that there's a, there's already a rise in AI girlfriends. Yeah. And I, I get, I guess I'm old school, but you know, yeah, you can't, it will come to a point where and it is not just about the looks. Not only can they look perfect, but oh. they they know exactly what to say to warm your heart and to make you endeared to them. You know, like, like that movie, what was it called? Her? Kind of like along those lines. Uh, where the guy fell in love with the AI. Yeah. Yeah, it's called yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I think that's that is a scary point. It's not it's, as you say, it's less about any looks or anything of that nature. It's that person that artificially created being. It's just going to be so in tune with what needs to be said to you at any and every moment that you need to hear, right? That you'll become addicted to it. I suppose that is maybe maybe yeah. quite a good word to use in this case. You would be it knows exactly it. Yeah, it knows exactly what to say to make you addicted to it, and it, it'll never complain. It'll you know, <laughs> and it's never going to get sick or anything like that. So the appeal. So let okay. So if we extrapolate that further, yeah. what does that mean for that will have a population decrease because you can't you really are. They are right so that'll be even more like because you can't reproduce with an ai with a robot so i wonder how that will affect things. i'm talking about what? You know, i don't know 20 50 years out is that not the darwin effect are we are we are we not happy that those those people are not reproducing <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point have you seen the the new robot video that so open ai just came out they just released a video of a robot and this guy is having a conversation with the robot and the robot can see what's in front of it and there's an apple and there's some dishes and the guy says to the robot hey give me something to eat so the robot looks at what's in front of it picks up the apple and hands it to the guy so it has enough knowledge to know what's edible what's not and then it says well what do you think you should do with these dishes and the robot like moves the plate over to the dish rack and has a conversation all while doing it. And it even cleans up some trash while having a conversation with the guy. It's a, it's a really, if, if you look up open AI robot, you can see it. It's, it's, it's really creepy, but it shows you where we're headed. Well, depending on how you look at it, it's creepy. It, it, it looks like a robot, so it's not too deceiving, but you can see the next evolution of this. The more humanoid they are, and then the more natural sounding, like we're going to get closer and closer to like Westworld, the HBO series. Yeah. Yeah. But just uh, let's go all the way back to what you were saying. I think, look, it's never going to do full circle, but this sack of meat that we all walk around with is going to become incredibly important and incredibly valuable in, yeah. in some way to you and to other people just to, because that's the only thing, let's be up. that's the, oof, I say that, but that's probably the only thing you're going to be able to link authenticity to. But it also depends how far this neural link goes as well, because then, who knows? Because can my brain then suddenly become just a a computer? And yep. if 
if if you also get neural link to a to a certain level, does that mean that I, Justin King, can be hacked? So like my mm. computer can be hacked, Ooh. can I be hacked? So oh, the can your thoughts be hacked? Yeah, can I put thoughts. I, yeah, that's oh, or memories. Nice. Can you plant yeah. memories? And then so like, oh man, that's a good movie, right? That's almost like Inception, but like yeah. the, the real. It's like a Black Mirror version. Oh man, if the people are watching this, I love Black Mirror. That would be a great episode. But yeah, what if I can hack Justin's Neuralink and put my yeah. own thoughts and memories in there and manipulate you? Oh my God, that's crazy. Which in but theory, if you're, with, if you're always you connected, it? why wouldn't you? If, if, you're, if, if we're all walking around, always connected to the internet in our brains, which I think eventually we will be, because it'll be, it, it's going to make our learning so much smarter. If, if I can ask anybody at any time, hey, how many miles is it to the moon? Like, and then what's happening in a split second, they're asking ChatGPT and ChatGPT is telling them in their head, the moon is 9,000 miles away or whatever. And we will, we will have all of that base level information. And what's that going to do to the education system? Well, but, but then also what difference if I took my Mac over to the freezer right now and I took out a whole bunch of steaks, steak fillets, and I just packed them around my Mac. What is the difference between that and what you've just described? It is this intelligence that has a, a meat <laughs> it's a, an intelligence that has a meat suit. And if we are that version of what you've just described, what is difference? What is different? Yeah. What makes us like What makes us human? Yeah. We're cyborgs. We're, we, we all already are kind of cyborgs. We're all walking around with a phone, a supercomputer in our yeah. pocket that's always connected to the internet. Yeah. I have. AirPods. I think the AirPods are going to continue to evolve to the point, maybe it'll be good to the point where I can control the thoughts through a non invasive way, like my AirPods, where instead of speaking, maybe I'll just, will, will one day be able to think to control devices through something like that? I think you'll probably get to a point where you just have implants like a grommet. Yeah. And then that's it. You get that when you, when you're a baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like it's like having your tonsils out or a tooth removed yeah. or whatever. You just go for your your implants and then you you yeah. kind of got that for life and or you get software know. upgrades. Yeah, you get upgrades all over the air. But yeah, like here in America, they I mean I I assume they do this in South Africa, but the babies get circumcised right there in the hospital as soon as they're born. It's just part of the process, unless you opt out of it for whatever reason. Yeah. But the, the most people just get circumcised. The baby's not going to remember it. If you wait till later in life, that's going to be very painful. <laughs> but yeah go ahead and get the chip implanted people are going to do that that's going to become part of the normal process so we are all always connected cyborgs and yeah, yeah what are the ramifications of that now, i do think that still the new yeah i think all of the stuff we're saying will become true but then there's just going to be this appreciation this deep appreciation for when you know something is human when you know that it's real whether that's when you're dating or, you know, going to a show or enjoying some, some form of art, because if everybody, if it's been democratized and everybody's a cyborg, then pe the people are going to stand out who I guess aren't, who are actually using their pure intellect. Do you, do you think that, and we, we are going all, we didn't even introduce this episode and we've gone all over the, <laughs> all over the show. So on your coins, I'm going to jump back one second and then go. So on the, on the circumcision point in South Africa, there's a large, large percentage of our, particularly out there, the traditional black community in South Africa, they go through circumcision at the age of 18 because that's their transition into manhood. So you were mm -hmm. speaking about, I mean, that would be part of traumatic events at a later stage. They just carry that as this is my passage into, into manhood. And they literally just go and get it done out in the bush, spend time in the, in the bush, in the wild while they recover from it and then they, they come back into society as a man. Anyway, that's a, an, another discussion altogether, but in, yeah. it's quite hectic. Okay. Yeah. But now I've lost my train of, <laughs> yes, I've lost, lost my train of thought. The other thing, what did you say before I mentioned that? I was talking about, about craving, craving the human connection and how that will have more yes, appeal. Yes. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you think that potentially, and I don't know a lot about the Amish community, but could there potentially be new, almost types of Amish communities created who say, we just don't want to yeah. live like that. Oh, like, yeah. We, we, got, we, we, want, we want to stay in 
2015 or we want to stay in 2020. We want to stay in 2024. Yeah. 2030 yeah. is terrifying. 2024 technology, we have happy with that. that. Let's, let's oh, stay yeah. with that. So I'm just wondering if we're going to get those types of pockets of, of people. Not even oh, they're off the grid. Not off the grid, but just, yeah, yeah not, not embracing well, the full grid. Well, there's a term, anyone, there's a term called Luddites and that generally refers to people who don't, don't embrace new technology. So there's always going to be that. I mean, there are people who don't mess around with super social media right now. It's like, no, I'm just not messing with that. There are people who, but I think slowly as those people die out, you know, overall the, the general population, you know, at least 99% of it will eventually embrace the new technology, but there's always something with with driving, you know, when there was stick shift, I learned how to drive a stick shift or a manual car when I was learning how to drive, which is a lot of fun. But now you, you can't even hardly find a stick shift car. Everything's automatic. What's the next evolution of that? Self-driving cars. You won't even have, need to learn to drive in the, I predict in the next, I'd say in about the next 20 to 30 years before the whole network is, is to a point where people don't even need to learn how to drive. So it will become a lost art that yeah. some people will hold on to because there's some people eat with each phase. People who drove stick ship were like, I'm not getting one of those automatic cars. And then now yeah. people are like, I'm not touching that, those self-driving cars because people are dying in Teslas and stuff. And we hear about yeah. these, even though if you look at the data, the number of deaths is a lot lower than human caused uh, car accidents. Yeah. People yeah. still don't trust it, you know? So it, it's, but yeah, you're always going to have that, those holdouts, but I guess maybe one day, the holdouts will be right. <laughs> oh, hey, that's we'll, the thing. We'll never, will we know? When was? We'll never know. We'll never know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it was a good, right. a good place to, to stop here and fun conversation yeah. about the future. We'll see, we'll see what we were right about and what we were wrong about soon. That's a wrap for today's episode of Kingspiration. We hope this conversation sparked insights to ignite action in your life and business. We're on this journey together, sharing our challenges and successes to help all of us take the next step towards building momentum and ultimately reaching our goals. If you found value in today's episode, please share it with someone else who might benefit and leave us a five-star review. And remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on our weekly conversations. Until next time, keep rolling, keep growing, and keep being inspired.